now we can uh, start our meditation session. And the meditation session uh, running until 8 o'clock. And I will be guiding the first part of it. It's a wonderful opportunity to listen to just how to meditate and to enjoy the peace of meditation before we go into the talk. So for meditation, we're sitting down. It's much better, better if you're reasonably healthy, to sit down rather than lie down. Because people who lie down usually tend to fall asleep. However, that if you are sick or very old, then that'd be fine to be able to lie down. But try and keep away, and this impinges on the sound. That'd be better to, uh, if you are lying down, doing meditation at home, put the pillows a distance from you so you can lie down, but not in your sleeping position, otherwise your brain will be confused. Do you want me to meditate or do you want me to sleep? And if you have a different posture for meditating, lying down, then your brain won't be confused. And you'll be able to meditate, become very peaceful in the lying down position. But now is the opportunity to relax the body, first of all. If the body isn't at peace, it's very hard for the mind to be still. The body always demands attention. And if ever you want to validate that, prove it for yourself. Sometimes, just uh, when there's a meditation going on, open your eyes and see people. See what they're doing with their hands or with their body. Always moving, always scratching, adjusting this, adjusting that. It's because your body is incredibly demanding. It wants attention. It wants more comfort. And that's one of the reasons why it disturbs the stillness of meditation. Unless we calm it down, first of all. And so, with my eyes closed, I'm building up more awareness of my body. Obviously, I'm talking to you as well, but this is just the normal thing I do when I teach meditation, so it hardly disturbs my attention at all. So I become aware, first of all, of my legs sitting here. By coming aware of them, it means that that's my field of attention. It focuses on the, the sensations in my legs, both legs. It's as if I ask my legs, how are you? And I have enough of a relationship with my legs that they answer me. It's like you ask a partner or you ask the people you work with, how are you? And you really mean it. And they let you know. And they don't just let you know in words, they let you know in their body language, in the way of their speech. This is how we are aware of the well-being and comfort of our own legs to begin with. It's a way of establishing mindfulness. So you're aware of the comfort level of your legs. We don't stop there. Once we realize just how comfortable or uncomfortable they are, then we are kind enough to adjust our legs. If you're sitting on a chair, make sure that your feet are comfortable on the floor. Or you can move them apart, you can move them together, you can just uh, tuck them a little bit more under the chair or spread them out. There's lots of space here. And your knees, are they together or are they apart? Which is the most comfortable position for them? And sometimes you have to use trial and error. Move them, and mindfulness gives you feedback. You know straight away if they're more comfortable than they were before. If so, well done. If not, then try again to make them more comfortable. This is not just for getting comfort in your legs. This is also training establishing 
this combination of mindfulness and kindness which will take you deep into your mind later on. So I'm just aware of my legs, making sure they're all, I'm fidgeting them a little bit. That's better. Then my legs are happy. Same with my knees to make sure they're not too scrunched up together, to make sure that they're at peace, they're comfortable. Even if I can't get them into perfect comfort, the fact that I care for my body, it's like the body reacts and just is at ease. Same as if you care for the people you live with, or you care for the animals, the pets. If you care for things, they tend to relax. If you try to order them, train them, make them be this way or that way, that's when they get tense and the meditation will not work. Kindness is the way. And then from my legs, I go out to my butt. Butt is usually on the cushion, but today just the cushion is hardly there at all. Don't need it today. Feel my butt. Which means that I know how comfortable it is, whether it needs adjustment, that it needs to be pushed forward or backwards or to the side. It knows whether there's any tight pieces of clothing which is biting into the flesh. That awareness cares, is ready to move and adjust if necessary. Then I go up to my waist, making sure that the belt which holds up my lower robe is not too tight, not too loose. And then my back is well arched. Or I can have it straight, doesn't matter. How does your back feel right now? Does it need some adjustment? Some people like to lean back against the backrest of the chair. Some people like to just have a straight back. One is not better than the other. It's what is most comfortable for you today, right now. But remember, it's a comfort which you can maintain for 30 minutes. You soon get to know your best posture for your back during meditation. And again, I usually just stretch my back. And then let go. My back becomes very, very relaxed. And I feel the tightness in my, the muscles of my shoulders. And I want to loosen those muscles, to relax them to the max. And when you are mindful a lot, you soon get to know the condition of those muscles, and if necessary, how to relax them. For me, I use the imagination that these muscles are strings and something is pulling them apart, stretching them. And I imagine just letting go of both ends. That very word, let go, I can feel the tension in those muscles loosen. And the muscles relax. After a while, it's just so easy, because they've been doing it for a long time. Practice makes, not perfect, but makes easy. And I allow my awareness to go down my arms to my hands, and to feel the posture of my hands, their position, and there's just so many people to say this position is better than another position. But I've done so much meditation, I'm good at this. This is my 
practice, my profession, you might say. And I know I can get some really deep meditations with the hands all over the place. But what I do need to do is be aware of them, be kind to them, check them, make sure they're okay. I let my hands decide how they want to be positioned, not some book or some theory. I feel them, experiment. And now my hands tell me that they're really comfortable. So I let, leave them alone now. And go back to, up to my shoulders and neck. People do have neck pains. Because a lot of time their head is too far forward. Or too far back, or sometimes leaning to the left or the right. I feel the muscles in the neck. I know how they are. Sometimes I move the neck back or move it forward until I can know by direct experience the most comfortable position of my head on top of the neck. And also sometimes when I notice the muscles in my, in my throat. I do have allergies sometimes, and hay fever, and I can feel my throat. I'm not afraid of the itchiness in the throat. I'm kind to it. I'm not trying to control it. I'm trying to let it be. I know what letting be is. It's what makes any irritation get less and less and less. That it feels, the throat feels at ease. And then I go to my head, especially the muscles in the face, around the eyes, around the mouth, you may include the nose and the forehead if you wish. How do those muscles feel right now? And again, the reason why I'm interested in those muscles, because from the tightness in those muscles, the configuration of those muscles around the eyes and the mouth, that tells me my emotional well-being. If a person is angry, is tired, is inspired or is afraid. That's written on the face, by which we mean the muscles are differently stretched, squashed or whatever, according to those emotions. When I start to be aware of those muscles, around eyes and mouth in particular, I start to relax them. Just like I can lift my hand or put it down again. I've learned how to look at the muscles around the eyes and the mouth and how to relax them. So they're not pulled apart, they're not stretched. They're totally at ease, loosened. Comfortable. So I can hardly see any tension in them at all. And that feels really relaxed. And it also eases any emotional tension which caused those muscles to tighten up in the first place. My face feels relaxed. Now I look at my whole body. Just be aware of it as a unit rather than made up of parts. Feel the whole thing, just sitting here. This is why I call it relaxed to the max. The whole thing. And if I can see anything which needs a little bit more kindness. My back is a tiny bit tight, so I'm going to loosen it a bit.
with kindness, attention. My whole body feels so at ease. I don't make this up, my body does feel really relaxed. And it's delightful. This is that part of the meditation where the body feels is so actually pleasurable, I've got to admit it. It's joyful. It feels at ease, free. And that delight of a relaxed body is what takes you deeper into relaxation. It's a wonderful thing to know. The delight is not an obstacle in this part of meditation, because this delight is actually coming from your mind. It's how your mind looks at the relaxed body. My body eases off more and more and more. I don't need to force my attention on my body. So delicious, delightful, at ease. It's easy to watch. Quite often the mind wanders off because it's not happy where it is. That's why it wanders. It's looking for happiness somewhere else. But if you notice pleasure in the relaxed body, the mind is happy to be here. It just stays. Enjoying the peace and the delight of a body which is at ease, relaxed. And then I go deeper, deeper into this wonderful place called the mind. And to understand what I mean by that, I just use one quality of my mind, which is peace. How peaceful am I right now? I call this being aware of the peaceometer. I give it a number from one to ten. One is really, really peaceful, and ten is quite agitated. I don't give a value judgment to how agitated or how peaceful I am. But I know how peaceful or how disturbed. Once I'm aware, mindful, of that part of the mind where peace is. I soon learn how to make that peace deeper. Same way when I learned how to relax parts of my body, how to bring them more at ease. I'm now watching my mind, learning how to bring more peace to take that number closer and closer to one. And however you do it, bring it closer to one, you'll find it always involves present moment, the past, what can you do with it? It's, it's like a rerun movie. You don't learn from the past, you learn from the present. It just wastes time. And as for the future, now is where your future is being made. If you're a very busy person with lots of stuff to do, 
Please remember, now is where you can build up the power to face the future successfully. Whenever I come into this moment, the level on my piezometer drops. It's very peaceful. And when you are peaceful, what does peace feel like? Can you notice the delight of peace? The emotional feeling of peace? It's not trying to write an essay about peace, that's too much thinking. We feel it. And the silence comes. We know without a word trying to describe it. The concepts actually disturb peace. Peace is more refined. We get to know peace like a good friend which becomes so wonderful to be with, so delightful. The mind does not wander anywhere. Because it's joyful being here with peace itself. If you want to watch the breath, it's just almost like a habit of mine at this stage in meditation. I don't watch the breath any place in my body, I just know it as it goes in. It's just so soft. This air comes into my mouth and down into my lungs. When it's ready, it goes out again. I never control the breathing. I just know it. It becomes so soft and so peaceful and delightful.
getting close to the end of the meditation now. What are you aware of inside right now? What is the quality of peace and delight? How strong are those two things? Because peace is a particular flavor of inner delight. It can be so gorgeous. It's not only gorgeous, it's very therapeutic creates good health, heals, brings peace into your body and into your mind. How does your body feel right now? You're going to come out of the meditation in a moment. So check your body. Honestly, my body does want to come out. Are you happy? Sitting here. It's now to come out, time to come out. So I'll open my eyes. Ring the gong now three times. When the gong finishes sounding for that third time, please come out of the meditation. And I'm sorry if the gong is a bit 